right, so we're going through the do now. I'm saying we have two concentric circles. Um, I know we just briefly spoke about this yesterday, but does anybody know what does it mean for two circles to be concentric? They have to have the same what? Center point. Two circles are concentric if they have the same center point. So here, you notice I have two circles. They both have center O. So we have the smaller circle with center O and we have the bigger circle with center O. And then I'm telling you that angle BOD is a right angle. So right in here, we have a 90 degree angle. And we have that AB is congruent to AO, which is five. So if AO is five, AB is five. So what does that mean for BO? How long is BO? 10, you got it. All right, what fraction of the small circle is AFC? What they're saying AFC, they mean this arc AFC. Do we agree that since AOC is 90 degrees, this arc, so it's sort of like splitting it into fours, that this arc would be one-fourth of the circle? So this would be one-fourth of the circle. All right. Then they're saying, well, what fraction of the large circle is BJD? Again, there should be an arc over this. We're going to go over the whole thing with arcs. I know we haven't really spoke about it yet. So now if we're looking at from B to J to D, again, we're looking back at the angle and that's 90 degrees. So isn't this BOD, this sort of angle splitting the circle into fours again? So then this arc BJD again is one fourth of the circle. Do you think since arc AFC and BJD are both one fourth the circle. Do you think they're congruent to each other? Do you think they'd be end up being the same length? No. Well, which one would be longer? Which one would be longer, Nora? Good. BJD would be longer. Why would arc BJD be longer? Because it's part of the bigger circle. And even though we always say things aren't drawn to scale, we do know that the relative position is correct. So the smaller circle is inside of the larger circle. So the larger circle is, in fact, it has to be bigger because it's around the smaller circle. Okay, so now they're asking us, find the length of a segment AC. Well, there is no segment AC, but we can draw one because two points determine a segment. And in order to find the length of AC, does anybody know which triangle I'm going to use to find the length of AC? Which triangle? I'm going to have to use a triangle to find the length of AC. I just want to know which triangle I'm going to use. AJ? AOC. And in triangle AOC, do we all agree that we were told that AO is 5? I'm going to tell you that I also know that OC is 5. Can someone tell me how do I know that OC is 5? I didn't just make that up. I know for a fact. Kaylee? Because AO and OC are both radii, exactly, of the smaller circle, and all radii are congruent. So now, we could find AC. I can do the Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. Or we can realize this is what kind of triangle? Nora? Yeah, how did you know, Nora, that this was a 45, 45, 90? You got it. If legs of a triangle are congruent, then their base angles have to be congruent, which means this is a 45, 45, 90, which means we have X, X. Who remembers the hypotenuse? What is the hypotenuse? X squared. Not X squared. X root 2. I knew that. All right. So do we all agree X has to equal 5? So then AC is 5 root 2.
All right, now we want to find BD. Now we want to find BD. So there's no segment drawn for BD, but I'm going to go ahead and draw one now because two points determine a segment. Which triangle am I going to use to find BD? You got it, triangle BOD. And we all agree that BO is 10 because we had labeled it. Well, I know that OD is also 10. Somebody who's not Nora, tell me how come I know that OD, or was it Kaylee that told me? Someone told me. All right, not Joe, Kaylee, or Nora. Somebody tell me, how do I know that OD is also 10? Sophia? Good, because they're radii of the same circle and all radii of the same circle are congruent. So once again, I have two sides congruent. Doesn't that mean I also have the two base angles congruent? So I know that this is again 45, 45, 90. So we're X, X, X root two. So BD has to be 10 root two. Could you have done the Pythagorean theorem? Yes. All right, we want to find the ratio of BD to AC. So that means they want BD on top, AC on the bottom. Well, we know BD is 10 root 2, and we know AC is 5 root 2. Do we agree the root 2s cancel? So we're left with 10 over 5, which simplifies down to 2 to 1. So the ratio of BD to AC is 2 to 1. All right, so even though I've never really spoke about parts of a circle with you or arcs, we sort of just figured it out on our own for this do now. So now let's just get into the formal definition of what an arc is. Hey, an arc is not a segment. An arc is sort of a path on a circle between two points on a circle. So um, we have our full circle, but if I want to talk about the path between two points, sort of like from A to B, that would be called an arc. So an arc is just a path on a circle between two points. It's not a segment because it's not straight, right? It's curved. All right, um, the center of the arc is the center of the circle. Uh, let's keep going down the definitions. All right, a central angle. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. And a central angle always intercepts an arc. So for example here, in this example, Angle AOB, that is my central angle. I know it's a central angle because it's vertex. The pointy part of the angle is at the center of the circle, and it's intercepting an arc, an arc or the endpoints are on an arc. Hey, what arc is it intercepting? It's intercepting arc AB. Hey, the sides of a central angle are always radii. The sides of a central angle are always radii. Now, any time we talk about arcs, there's actually two ways to get to that arc. So do you all see here have I ha how I have circle P? Now there's arc AB. And now arc AB, we can talk about the smaller path from A to B, but isn't there also a longer path from A to B? Right, if I say, the, path, the arc AB. Well, there's a, long, a shorter path from A to B, and there's a longer path from A to B. So the shorter path from A to B is called the minor arc. The shorter path between two points on a circle is called the minor arc. All right, the long way between those two points is called the major arc. Now, how do I distinguish when I'm writing between a minor arc and a major arc? Well, if there's only two letters, so if I only say AB, that's going to be a minor arc. For me to then talk about the major arc connecting the same two points, there must be a third letter in there. So let's say I have a point W here. 
if I called this, follow the letters A, W, B, that would tell me I'm discussing the major arc. So minor arc is always two letters, major arc is three. Minor arc is two letters, major arc is three. And the arc symbol is just that little sort of, I don't know, curved loop, whatever you want to call it, over the letters. Okay, so go down to where it says definition, a semicircle. A semicircle is an arc whose endpoints are of a diameter. Right? What is a semicircle? What is a semicircle? Dimitri? Half a circle. The prefix semi means half. So if I ask you for a semi perimeter, I'm asking you for half the perimeter. If I'm talking about a semicircle, I'm talking about half a circle. How many degrees is a full circle? Anybody remember that? How many degrees is a full circle? 360 full circle equals 360 degrees. What about a semicircle then? What is, how many degrees is a semicircle? Jeff? 180. So if EF is our diameter, and I know it's a diameter because it's going through the center point, so then the top is 180 degrees and the bottom is 180 degrees. Now, you can name a semicircle as either a major or minor arc. It does not matter. You can name a semicircle as either a major or a minor arc. It does not matter. All right, so now if I want to talk about arc AB, am I talking about major arc AB or minor arc AB when I say just arc AB? Minor, that's saying the shortest path between A and B. That is our minor arc. How would I identify the major arc AB? How would I name it looking at this diagram? So close, but follow the letter. So not A, B, X, A, then X, then B. You have to follow the order of the letter. So we could say A to X to B. So arc AXB would be the major arc. Now, the minor arc and the uh, sorry, the minor arc and the central angle that intercepts that minor arc are always the same amount of degrees. So, if this central angle is 120 degrees, the minor arc that it intercepts is also 120 degrees. If the central angle is 90, the minor arc it intercepts is also 90. We know the diameter splits a circle in half, so the top arc is 180, the bottom arc is 180. So really super important here, the central angle and the minor arc are the same degree measure. Central angle and the minor arc are the same degree measure. Okay, so let's see. I'm telling you an example one. The measure of arc AB is 20 degrees. Now, I want to find the measure of arc ACB. So what happened? I gave you the minor arc, and what do I want us to find? The major arc. Any ideas on how I can find the major arc? Dimitri. You got it. So we know the full circle is equal to 360 degrees. So the major arc will equal 360 minus the minor arc. So the major arc will be 340. You got it. So arc ACB will be 340 degrees. All right, example two, given the measure of angle XQY is 110, 
find the measure of arc x dy. So follow the letters x to d to y. So they want us to find the major arc. Before I find the major arc, somebody tell me what is the degree of the minor arc and how do you know? Will, what's the degree of the minor arc and how do you know? Good, how did you know? Um, it's good, it's the central angle, not center point, the central angle, because it has the same degree as the central angle. Um, Mike, Michael, tell me, how do I now find the major arc? You subtract You got it, 360 minus 110, and we get major arc x dy equals 250 degrees. All right, two arcs that have the same measure are not necessarily congruent. In the concentric circles shown, the measure of arc uh, AB is 65. Yeah, so looking at this diagram, do we all agree that, let's put an O here, that AOB is a central angle and COD is a central angle? All right, since um, let's first look at arc CD. Can somebody tell me how many degrees is arc CD? Amanda? 65 degrees. How many degrees is arc AB? How many degrees is arc AB? 65 degrees. They're both 65 degrees, but are these arcs the same length? There's no way possible these arcs are the same length because one arc is in one circle is inside of the other. So if I were to take this arc and stretch it out and see how long it is, there's no way that they're both the same length. One is definitely longer than the other. So what does that mean? Just because the arcs have the same degree does not mean that they are congruent. Those arcs are not congruent because they're not the same length. They have the same degree, meaning up they're taking the same fractional part of the circle. That's what it's saying, that this arc and this arc are taking up the same fractional part of the circle. But are their circles congruent? No, because one circle is clearly smaller than the other. So they're not congruent. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So when will two arcs be congruent? Right, so two arcs are congruent whenever they have the same measure and are part of the same circle or of congruent circles. So here, I have arc AB is 60 and I have arc CD is 60. I can now conclude that arc AB and CD are going to be congruent because not only are they the same degrees, but they're part of the same circle, which means they take up the same amount of space, so therefore they're the same length because they're in the same circle. Now, in this one, if I tell you circle P is congruent to circle Q, and I also tell you, oh, sorry, there should be degrees here. Let's say EF is 40 degrees and GH is 40 degrees. Because the circles are congruent and the arcs have the same degree, we can conclude that the arcs are congruent. So when are the only times these arcs are congruent? If the arcs have the same degree and they're in the same circle or the arcs have the same degree and they're in congruent circles. All right, so this is just pretty much summing up all the new vocabulary that we learned. So here's our circle, right? We know the center of the circle. The central angle comes, is an angle coming from the center of the circle, eating a minor arc. A, um, a chord we learned yesterday is just um, a segment in a circle whose endpoints are on the circle. And then we know the minor arc versus the major arc from today's vocabulary. This is all the new vocabulary we've learned so far. Okay, so these are all theorems. We need to know these theorems because we're gonna apply them, but they're all pretty much related. 
let me tell you what the first one says. If two central angles of a circle or of congruent circles are congruent, then their intercepted arcs are congruent. What does this mean? You don't have to redraw this. I'm just going to redraw it. So this is saying, let's say I have circle O, and I tell you that the vertical, that the, um, I tell you that the two central angles, angle one and angle two, are congruent. If the central angles are congruent, then I can say that their arcs are also congruent if they're in the same circle or if they're in congruent circles. So the other scenario would be if I had circle O and circle P and I told you circle O is congruent to circle P, And I also tell you angle AOB is congruent to angle CPD. Then we can conclude that arc AB is congruent to arc CD. So basically, if it's in the same circle or in congruent circles, if the central angles are congruent, then their corresponding arcs are congruent. All right, the inverse of that is also true. So now they're saying if I have the same circle or if I have congruent circles, if the arcs are congruent, then the corresponding central angles are congruent. So we're just sort of flipping it. So in the same circle or in congruent circles, if the central angles are congruent, the cords are con the arcs are congruent. And same idea, in congruent circles or in um, the same circle, if the arcs are congruent, then the central angles are congruent. Are we okay with the first two? All right, let's keep going. All right, if two central angles of a circle or of congruent circles are congruent, then their corresponding chords are congruent. All right, let me explain to you what a corresponding chord is. All right, so I have central angle one, I have central angle two. Let's say I told you that these central angles are congruent. Based on the last theorem, if these central angles are congruent, aren't arcs A, B, and C, D also congruent? Now the chord. The chord is not the arc. The chord is a segment connecting the endpoints of the arc. So what this theorem is telling us if my central angles are congruent, then not only are the arcs congruent, those cords that can connect the endpoints on the arcs will also be congruent. So AB will be congruent to CD. And this works if it's the same circle or if the circles are congruent. This works if it's the same circle or if the circles are congruent. All right, now the inverse of this theorem is also true. The inverse of this theorem is also true. So it's saying if I have in the same circle or in congruent circle the chords that we can connect from the arcs congruent, then the central angles are going to be congruent. All right, and the very last connection here. So now we know if we have the central angles, then I have the arcs congruent and the chords congruent. <laughs> Right. If I have the arc congruent, then I know the central angle's congruent. But if the central angle's congruent, isn't the chord also congruent? So basically, what this is going to summarize as, if you have one of those, then you have all three of those. So if you have central angles congruent, then you can say the arcs and the chords are congruent. Or if you have the chords congruent, then you can say the central angles and the arcs are congruent. If you have the arcs congruent, then you can say the chords and the central angles are congruent. So to summarize, if we are in the same circle or in congruent circles, congruent arcs yield to congruent uh, 
chords, which yields to congruent central angles. And I have the double arrow to show that it goes in any direction. If you have one, then you have them all as long as it's in the same circle or in congruent circles. All right, let's do some problems. Luckily for you, there's no proof, so this would probably play a bigger role in proofs to like memorize it versus understanding it. All right, so circle B. D is the midpoint of arc AC, even though it doesn't look like it is. It's not drawn to scale. So the midpoint of an arc acts as the same, um, it has the same function as the midpoint of a segment. When we're midpoint of an arc, the two sides on this on the web. All right, if you're midpoint of the arc, the arcs on either side of that midpoint will be congruent. So since D is the midpoint of arc AC, arc AD and arc DC will be congruent. Oh, this is a proof. We're not proving it. Um, let me make this into an algebra problem. Hold on. Actually, I can't. All right, let's just keep going to an actual algebra problem now. So we'll cross this off. All right, if the measure of arc AB is 102 degrees. All right, if the measure of arc AB is 102 degrees, which other angle or which angle is also 102 degrees? Amanda? AOB, because remember the central angle and its arc are the same degree. Um, find the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B in triangle AOB. All right, well, in this triangle, do you agree that AO and OB are radii? And what do we know? All radii of a circle are congruent. So now look at triangle AOB. If I have a triangle with two legs congruent, what else do I have? Two base angles congruent. How am I now going to go about finding the measure of angle A and angle B in this triangle? Any ideas? AJ? Um, you got it. A whole triangle is 180, so we're going to take our central angle, uh, subtract it from it. So we're going to get 78. Then we're going to get 78, and we're going to divide it by 2. And we are going to get uh, 39 degrees. So angle A equals 39 degrees. Angle B equals 39 degrees. All right, let's put a star on number three. There's going to be oops, there's going to be a whole section of questions like number three on your quiz when we get there. Three A and three B. And in my mind, these are the easiest questions, but for some reason, students tend to lose points here. So part A. What fractional part of a circle is an arc that's 36 degrees? So if you want a visual, you can absolutely can cre create a visual. Here's circle O, here's AB, and they're saying the arc is 36 degrees. Now they want to know what fractional part of a circle is an arc that's 36 degrees. Well, that means we're going to be 36 degrees out of how many degrees? 360, so that's what you do. You take the degrees they gave you, put it over 360, and then we simplify. <coughs> Did anybody simplify this down? One tenth, you got it. Divide by 36. So 36 degrees is one tenth of the circle. Okay, but then it says, what about if the arc is 200 degrees?
Well, again, that's 200 degrees out of how many? 360. So you're going to take the 200 and you're going to put it over 360. And then you simplify. So I'd cancel out these zeros. So then we'd have 20 over 36. And then we can divide by 4. And you're going to get 5 over 9. So you're 5 ninths of the circle at 200 degrees. All right, now part B is a little bit different. So part B, they're saying find the measure of an arc that is 7 twelfths of the circle. So now I'm giving you the fractional part, and I'm saying how many degrees does that have to be? Are we ready for part B to see how to do it? I'm going to discuss two different ways. The first way I'm going to discuss is the way I like to do it. So it says 7 twelfths of a circle. So this is how I like to do it. I take my fraction and then what mathematical operation goes with the word of? Multiplication. So then I would do times and then a circle is how many degrees? 360. I like doing it this way because it's multiplying fractions you're allowed to cross cancel. So I can say 12 goes into 360 30 times. And then we just multiply across. 7 times 30 is 210. So 7 twelfths of a circle is 210 degrees. All right, the other way, and some students prefer this way, and I'm absolutely fine with it. So the other way you can do this is you can say, well, 7 twelfths equals x over 360. You make a proportion. So 7 twelfths is what part of 360? Um, the thing with this is, which I'm completely fine with the proportion, you can cross cancel through multiplication. Are you ever allowed to cross cancel through equal sign? Never. And I see students doing that and that's what sort of messes things up for them if they use this way. You are not allowed to cross cancel through an equal sign. What do you do? You cross multiply through an equal sign. So then we'd get 7x is equal to 12 times 360. I don't know. Did anybody multiply this out? Can somebody multiply it out? Oh, I multiplied wrong, guys. I'm sorry. 12x equals 7 times 360. Thank you, Lexi. I cross-multiplied wrong. Um, this is 12. So then at this point, if I'm teaching you strategy here, I would divide by 12 on both sides, and then I could do 360 divided by 12 in my head. 12 goes into 360 30 times, and then we're left with 7 times 30, which is 210. Or you could have multiplied 7 and 360 and then divided by 12. Still would have gone 210. Okay, so when I give you the degree, all you do is put that degree over 360 and simplify. If I give you the fractional part, if I were you, I would just multiply that fractional part by 360 and get your answer. All right, this is a proof, so we're not doing this. All right, this should be O. Oh, no. This is E. Sorry, this is E. All right, it says that AD is a diameter of circle E. Important, why is it important? Because what does a diameter do? What does a diameter do to a circle? Amanda? Good, it creates two semicircles. So what does that mean? From A to D on top is 180 degrees. And from A to D on the bottom is 180 degrees. All right, it tells us that C is the midpoint of AD. Now, that's wrong. It should say C is the midpoint of BD. So let's fix that. D is the, C is the midpoint of BD. If C is the midpoint, what can we conclude? Easy, easy 
arc BC is congruent to arc CD. Then they're telling us that AB is 9x plus 30 degrees, because it says measure. Then it says CD is 54 minus x degrees. Well, if CD is 54 minus x degrees, which other one is 54 minus x degrees? BC, because they're congruent. Now, we want to find angle AEC, and we will. But before we find angle AE, AEC, I need to solve for x. Looking at what we have going on here, can anybody think of an equation to solve for x? Looking at how we have things marked here, does anybody have an equation to solve for x? So if these two, since these two are congruent, um, if I had different representation for them, like uh, like if it were like 2x minus 7 and a 54 minus x, two different variable expressions, then that would totally be the route we'd want to take is set them equal to each other. But because we labeled them both with the same thing, 54 minus x, if we did 54 minus x equals 54 minus x, we would subtract the 54s, they would cancel. And then you'd have negative x equals negative x, and then you would add the x's, and they would cancel. So you're just left with 0 equals 0. So in this scenario, because we had to represent them both with the same variable expression, we can't set them equal to each other because everything will cancel. Now, if I were given two different variable expressions for them, that would definitely be the route we want to take is to set them equal. Lex, do you want to try again? Look at the whole semicircle on top, the 180 degrees. Our, well, these aren't equal, right? They're not congruent. But this and this and this have to equal what? Like 180, exactly. Do you guys see how AC is our semicircle? Uh, sorry, AD is our semicircle. So that's why we said we know the semicircle is 180 degrees. Well, isn't this semicircle split into these three parts? So we're going to say 9x plus 30 plus 54 minus x plus 54 minus x equals 180. Um, combine our like terms. So 9x minus 1x is 8x minus another x is 7x. And then we have 54 plus 54 is 108 plus 30 is uh, 138. Subtract that 138 on both sides. We get 7x is equal to 42 and x will equal 6. Now I'm going to go plug in. 9 times 6 is 54, 54 plus 30 is 84, so arc AB is 84 degrees. Then I'm going to have uh, 54 minus 54 minus 6 is going to be 48, and if BC is 48, wouldn't CD also be 48 since they're congruent? Uh, now, going back to what I want to find, we want to find angle AEC. Now, unfortunately, I'm not asking for arcs. I'm asking for an angle measurement, A to E to C. That's this angle right here. But stay with me here. Isn't BEC a central angle? And what do we know about a central angle and its arc? Aren't they the same degree? So that means BEC is 48 degrees. And then look, isn't AEB also a central angle? And what do we know about a central angle and its arc? Aren't they also the same degree? So this is 84. So now how will I find angle AEC? AJ? You got it, 84 plus 48 
is going to be 132 degrees. All right, we are, I believe, done for today.